sausage here. I'm gonna have a chip. Go. We're glad you're here.
Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us this day, with friend and stranger, young and old, with lost and found. Be among us as our guest, our host, the one who says all. All are welcome. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we are weak and frail, because we cannot live without love, but often walk in darkness, we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we often abandon you and turn away, and walk past and are afraid, countless times fall short of your goodness. But you love us to the end and win a victory over all hatred. We need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we have your message to proclaim, because we have your kingdom to build, because there are so many in need of your love, because we have your life to live, we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father who created you and waits to welcome you home. In the name of the Son who searches for you. In the name of the Spirit who brings healing of healing and forgiveness and calls you to do the same, you have been set free. Amen. God of eternal peace, who offers the gift of peace and whose children are peacemakers, pour your peace into our hearts that conflict and anger may cease. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfill the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of his life eternal. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated the proclamation of the word.
shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, and a rattle, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They said, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. <coughs> Back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God. Thanks. Thanks be to God. This morning, Psalm, Psalm 104, uh, verses 25 and 35 and 37b. And the, the refrain shall be, Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. Send forth your spirit, Lord, and renew the faith of the earth. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of them. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. Send forth your spirit, Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Speak in 
other language as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were Jews, Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of the Jews. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each, each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Africa, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be. God declared that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun, sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord
Chardonnay. Can you give them a special kind of Chardonnay? The Kinder Surprise, isn't it? Anybody in the congregation know what Kinder Surprises are? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. I think they probably all got grandchildren because I don't think they buy them for themselves. So, this is a Kinder Surprise. And the reason I'm talking about Kinder Surprises today is because today is Pentecost Sunday. And I was thinking how much Kinder Surprises remind me of the Holy Spirit. Because what's on the outside? What's all this stuff here? This is like a label, isn't it? And it's all kind of fancy. Look at the pretty different colors. They got Kinder Surprise and all these different colors. And you got purples on the front and words on the back. And a shiny fall wrapper, which I'm going to take off. And how much these wrappers are like our clothes? You know, like we got pretty colors on, bows in our hair, fancy shoes on our feet, and makeup and jewelry. All this is like the wrapping. You know, the wrapping that see? Yeah, that's but that's not really who we are, is it? We're not really the wrapping. We're not really what we see on the other side. But then we get to the chocolate stuff. Oh my goodness, I love chocolate. You like chocolate? I like chocolate. Who here likes chocolate? Yeah. Who don't like chocolate? <laughs> our chocolate is like the rest of us, you know? Like that's our bodies and our brains and all the things that's inside us are here. That's our chocolate. That's what makes up the rest of us. But what's the best? Do we keep this and just put it on the shelf and leave it like this? No. What do we do with it? Eat us. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. We got to eat them for sure. But there's something inside here. Do we eat what's inside? No. <laughs> what's inside, I wonder? A toy. Yeah. We're going to open it up. So, the chocolate is like our bodies. This is us. And our wrapper is like our clothes. But inside is a toy. I wonder what is it? Do you want to have a look? Or maybe we should just leave it. Maybe we'll look. <laughs> No, what if we didn't look? That's kind of like, if we don't look, it's kind of like having the gift of the Holy Spirit and not recognizing we have the gift. Right? We want to look. We want to enjoy the Holy Spirit, don't we? And the Holy Spirit's inside of us. It's a gift we all have, but if we don't acknowledge that, if we don't open up the gift, we won't get to enjoy it. So here, you want to open up this one and see what's inside? Hmm. Probably not the Holy Spirit, but there might be something else we can enjoy. They look different than we might think that. We have to sit there and open it. That's a hard one. Can you see? I've never seen one like that. They're different. Holy moly. How many do you think they go? Oh, okay. Gospel of 
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to the disciples, When the Advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, as you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who said to me, Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. For when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, and for this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I was preparing for this morning's sermon, I came across a reflection written by uh, Jake Olmsby, who is a bishop with the Episcopal Church in the United States. And he entitled Saying Yes to a Full Heart of Life. Sometimes we need a little help. So I'd like to share that reflection with you this morning. And he wrote, When C.S. Lewis was 17, he wrote the following words to a friend. I believe in no religion. There's absolutely no proof of any of them. And from a philosophical standpoint, Christianity is not even the best. Fifteen years later, he wrote another letter to the same friend. And in that note he said, Christianity is God expressing himself through what we call real things, namely the actual incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection. That was quite a turnaround. But by Lewis's own account, it took him almost the most of 15 years between those two letters to arrive at being a devoted follower of Jesus. His friendship with the Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien played a large role in Lewis's conversion. But strictly speaking, Tolkien did not logically demonstrate to Lewis that Christian doctrine is objectively true. Instead, we imagine that their friendship edged Lewis towards a deeper, more vulnerable honesty about his own life. Lewis yearned for a full heart of life, a life that his atheist worldview was unable to support. Anna Mont, another author, gives us a glimpse of the contours of a full heart of life and what she says about her friend Tim. 
She said, Tim craved a reset. Freedom from the same ten worries and concerns. Freedom from the same ten reasons he was mad. Freedom from the obsession with the bathroom scale. Freedom from the perfectionism. The disappointment in himself. The dissatisfaction that ran like an underground river through him for a whole lifetime. Freedom from dragging all of this along with him everywhere he went, like a dinosaur's tail. He longed to feel more peaceful, more present, and more alive. An honest acknowledgement of our desires for a full-hearted life and the realization that we are totally powerless to achieve that on our own is what can open us to the work of the Holy Spirit. The risen Jesus comes to dwell in our hearts and to walk with us along life's winding pathways. That's who the Holy Spirit is, the crucified, risen, and ascended Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is Jesus, up close and personal, for you and for me, and for anyone who actually notices and takes part and responds to his presence. Jesus taught his friends to think about the Holy Spirit as a spirit of truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit helps us to see things as they really are. And here's how Lewis put it later. He said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Jesus himself was a bit more specific. He said that the spirit of truth will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Or to put it a bit differently, the spirit reveals to us the truth about sin, righteousness and judgment. So let's look at each, each one of those. First, the truth about sin. The truth about sin is the truth about being human. God created everyone in the divine image. That means each and every human being yearns not just to be loved by someone or to find that special someone to love, but whether we realize it or not, we yearn to be loving because it's just who we are. To be human is to have that sense of and a desire for a full heart of life. To love God with all that we've got and to love our neighbor as if we share a common circulatory system. And yet we can't quite seem to pull it off with any consistency, can we? Paul puts it sort of bluntly. He says, I do not do what I want to do but I do the very thing I hate. We need a power greater than ourselves to save us from ourselves. To quote Paul again, he says, <coughs> Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this brings us to the truth about righteousness. Many non-Christians and a number of thoroughly secular people acknowledge that Jesus was a gifted teacher. And that he set the example of compassion, justice, and moral courage. But there have been many remarkable spiritual teachers and scores of moral examples for us to follow. But what set Jesus apart is that he is God incarnate force of his teachings and the appeal of his example derived ultimately from who he is. Jesus is the power of divine love itself. 
And only God's love has the power to radically transform us, to radically transform the human soul that is within us. The spirit drives down to earth, dives into our inner life, and transforms us. As we own the prophet Ezekiel, we hear God's promise to those who receive it. The prophet wrote, A new heart I will give you, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. In the Holy Spirit, Jesus makes good on that promise. Sometimes we think of the righteousness as doing what is right, obeying the moral law. Now, the righteousness is relationship. It's our personal relationship with the risen Lord. The relationship changes our spiritual DNA. We're no longer half-hearted, but we're full-hearted. At least we're heading in that direction. We're trying. We begin to do what we really want and to love that who we really are. So righteousness is a state of the soul that results from our relationship with Christ. And we do what is right because Jesus has made us righteous. And this brings us to what the Spirit teaches us about judgment. You may know people who think that God's judgment is kind of like a moral accounting. God watches every move we make. He assesses the moral quality of everything we do and what we leave undone. At the end of the lives, God adds up the naughty list and the nice list in some kind of a moral ledger. Depending on the bottom line, we get either eternal judgment or eternal salvation. It's all about you and me frequently doing the things that are right more often than we do the things that are wrong. That way we pass that celestial audit. But we remember that righteousness is not doing the right thing. To put it briefly, righteousness is a state of our soul that has said yes to making a relationship with Jesus the cornerstone of our lives. Right action emerges from the soul. And that's what led C.S. Lewis to say this about judgment. He said, There are two kinds of people in the end those who say to God, Thy will be done, and those to whom God says in the end, Thy will be done, and all that are in hell choose. Without that self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and consistently desires joy will ever miss it. Those who seek will find, and for those who knock, it's open. In the end, the spirit of truth helps us to say yes to the full heart of life. So as we celebrate this day of Pentecost, may we open once again to the Holy Spirit. May God open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to the guidance of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit was poured upon only those who are worthy, none of us would receive it. But it's here for all of those who want to receive. So may we always come to God with open hearts and be open to the presence and the movement of the Spirit within us. God bless you.
love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We pray for all who are recovering from surgery or accidents, struggling with mental health or addictions, suffering from pain and injury, taking treatments and medications, or experiencing declining health due to age or disease. May they feel God's presence in their time of need. We pray for God's healing grace and mercy for Robin. Ella, Alan, Alan, Francis, Liz, Fred, Doris, Fred, Devin, Jim, Janima, Dwayne, and Grayson. And we say, Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, Creator, and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Come, Holy Spirit, Counselor, and touch our lips that we may proclaim your word. Let us pray. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, power from on high. Make us agents of peace and ministers of holiness. Let us pray. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God. Give life to the dry bones of this exiled age. And make us a living people, holy and free. Let us pray. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth. Strengthen us in the list of faith. Let us pray. Come, come Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. You are the catalyst that ignites us and the fuel that sustains us. You fill us with your fragrance as you enter our lives. You empower us to carry a flame in our hearts, to be a fragrance warm and light of your love in this dark world. Let us pray. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Our offertory today is all people that are virtually blessed.
receive all we offer you this day. Let the Spirit who bestowed on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And today, Blair and Delima have brought along some prayer shawls. We want to ask God's blessing on those as we take them and give them to people in the community who are in need of healing and prayer. Where do you want to pray that? Okay, pray that now. It's marvelous. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as your people have knit these shawls together with love and prayers, I pray, Lord, they will be a blessing to those who receive them. May they feel your love surrounding them as they wrap their shoulders in these shawls, and may you pour your blessing of healing upon them. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God.